Hey friends, how are you today? I hope you're having a great day. I'm in the mood to play with something a little more abstract, more loose. Um, I just finished this painting. I'm just looking at it there for a second. Isn't that pretty? So that's a loose impressionistic landscape here. Maybe I hold it back a little bit. Kind of get a look at it. So I use thalo green and a thalo blue green shade for the blues and the kind of aqua color sky. Isn't that fun? The, the video's coming out in, uh, it, or it came out in just, uh, <laughs> okay, let's, let's start again. The video came out a couple days ago to a week ago, depending on when it falls into the schedule for us uploading. <laughs> that was funny. I'm so excited. I got all tongue-tied. Here, I'm going to get a little closer so you can see some of the brushwork. Okay, that's probably enough show and tell. I'm just excited about it. So I'll do something tight, like a pet portrait, or I just recently did a buffalo painting that you might like. It's really yummy. And then now I want to loosen up. And also I want to get um, a little bit larger paintings because I'm going into a new gallery, which I'm really excited about. So I want to do a fall, I'm kind of in a fall mood. Oh, it was 56 degrees this morning when I woke up here. And it wasn't humid. I just love, love the fall weather here in Omaha, Omaha, Nebraska. So I want to do a palette knife painting. It's been quite a while since I've done one. So since it's fall time, I think I'm going to do some birch trees. This is a palette knife painting I did a while ago. Here we get a little closer. Or actually, these are aspen trees because one, one of you helped me out. I was trying to find out online and I wasn't getting the answer. So aspen trees have the little black spots that I love. I think they're called eyes. A lot of times a branch comes out of there. Um, birch trees do not. So I, I just love learning little things like that. So this is another 18 by 24 inch canvas. It's from Michaels. It's their level two. So it's three quarter quarters of an inch deep, but it has the beveled. I don't know if you can see it. It has, oh yeah, you can kind of, it has a beveled um, stretcher bars, which is really nice. So the stretcher bars are wood kiln dried, which helps keep them nice and straight. It's got a cross support piece and then it's tucked and then there's a little rubber gasket. So that's called splined. I love that. I love that. They're really nice canvases. Um, acid free gesso. And I've got the word love on there. I wrote it with a little piece of Blick art materials, chalk pastel. So I'm going to get a little bit of a background color on here and I'll be back in a bit. Hey, just a couple thoughts. So I just wanted to get some paint on there and I think I said I was going to do a warm painting, but this is clearly cool blue gray. <laughs> we'll just see how it turns out. But I thought blue, a um, muted blue made sense for the first layer because probably trees, there's going to be sky and you can go really crazy with color. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Um, that landscape I showed you had a lot of intense color. So I'm using um, Inden Thrain Blue just because it was over here by my easel. Neutral Gray 5 and Titanium White over here. And I'm going to save this palette in case I want to come back with these colors. But one thought I had, oh I like having the microphone so when I turn you still hear me pretty well, is I buy Liquitex acrylic in these jars. I, you, you might even be able to buy it in a bigger jar upside down. I keep it upside down so the paint's down on this end. It's cheaper. And then I also buy Liquitex. Oh, they're both titanium white. I don't know if I'm making sense today. Um, I buy titanium white in the tube and the heavy body too in case I want. So I don't have to add any medium texture medium to it and I can get some impasto type things going on. Oh, maybe we'll do that on this one. Some impasto might be kind of fun. Okay. So I, I, dried it with a hair dryer so that I could, it would be dry to the touch and I could flip it and paint the other, the other sides. And now I'm going to let this dry for a bit before I paint some more. I'll be back after a while. I forgot to show you the brush. 
Um, Artist Loft from Michaels. I really like this one. I like, I've got a bigger brush, but this one will fit into my mason jars. Here, let me, um, is that like a two quart? No, that's like a one quart mason jar. I can't read it. <laughs> but so that'll fit into the top of it for water. So I like that in case I need a little water. Uh, what size is it? It just says number 16 on it. It's about that big. Okay guys, I'm gonna paint for a bit after this dries and then I'll be back. Okay, everything's fairly dry. I dried it with a hair dryer. And then I was thinking, um, you might like to see this painting. This one has a traceable. I think this is gonna be more where I'm heading, but I wanna put some leaves in. I wanna make it a little more abstract, a little less real. Here we go, get it closer. That has some fun warmer tones in it and some blues in it, which I really like. The first one I showed you was just like a two color, three color painting. Um, this one kind of is too. I just did it a little bit differently, I guess. Anyway, isn't that fun? That's a little, little shadow box. Okay, so I'm going to, the other only other comment I wanted to make, I probably should kind of scooch down. <laughs> um, this is actually gonna be a pretty good height for me to paint. It's a little high, a little above my shoulder here, but a lot of it will be pretty good. Um, is that you kind of want, oh, like maybe I want five of them, maybe a big one. And then you kind of want to watch your spacing so it's not equal where the trees hit the top and the bottom. Um, you could make it equal. I just think it's more interesting. Here, maybe I'll show you here. You know, I've got, pretty tight, a little bit more space up here because it bends, you know, tight, tight, bigger. Just get a little rhythm going. This is something to think about. And then I've got a kind of a beigey chalk pastel. I don't know if it's going to show. So anyway, I'm going to sketch on here and then probably even start painting. And I keep saying I'll be back after I start, after I paint and I keep coming back on this one sooner. Okay, guys, back in a bit. Okay, I thought I'd pop in. Oh, I feel like I should. <laughs> so I like, this is a much more comfortable angle, but uh, when I video, it definitely cuts off the top of my head, which maybe doesn't matter at all. I've got a roadmap wrap, bleh. I've got a roadmap going now. I've put in some trees. I tried to vary the width. Actually, that's pretty close. That's bigger. That's pretty good. How about up here, let's check as long as I'm checking. So that's real skinny, which is good. That's pretty close. Oh, that's pretty close. Well, at least I go bigger here. Whoops, let's see, where's... Oh, and a little smaller there. I think we're good. I think we'll be good. And these trees might grow a little bit as I palette knife paint them. I used a number, I think it's a one inch, actually. It's a one inch low Cornell uh, flat brush just because it's faster. You could um, you could start straight out of the box with a palette knife. One nice thing is to start a little thinner and have some color down and then build some palette, palette knife layers on top of it. Uh, it was a little easier, I think. Here, I don't know, I don't remember where I left off. So did I tell you my colors? We'll do it real quick in case I didn't. Titanium white, Mars black, burnt umber, Burnt Umber and a little bit of raw sienna made a, made a, oh no, actually that's not Burnt Umber. Uh, Mars Black and raw sienna makes a good brown. And then I just, I just stepped out some browns there. Uh, I put some Indenthrine Blue on my palette, which I used on the background. And I think I'm gonna work on the background a little bit and I may cover up my branches, but it, this is just a roadmap to, so I know kind of what I'm thinking and to see if it's 
if it's balanced and that sort of thing. So, okay, I think that's all I need to tell you. I'm going to use a bigger palette knife. This one just says, I don't know what the brand is. Well, it says Italy. It has Blick on it. I think it's a Blick brand. It's a pretty big one. Here, I'm going to set my palette down. If that helps you a little bit. Or maybe I'll use this one. This one's not quite as big. Um, this one's an Artist Loft from Michaels. What else do I have in here? Oh, I've got this one. This one's a Blick. <laughs> okay. Oh, actually, that could be kind of fun just to scrape and pull down. I might use this one. All right, I'm going to play with paint and texture, and I'll be back in a bit. Hey, just a couple thoughts. So, um, when you palette knife paint, you're most likely going to use more paint. But it also gives you some nice textures. And as you get some texture on here, you can get some skipping. Here, let's see if I can show you. It's kind of wet. Um, I'll try to, well, here, maybe. I don't want to, I won't remember if I don't show you now. Can you see? Oh, there. It's a little bit here. It's a little bit of a weird <laughs> angle. <laughs> oh, gosh, you guys, I don't know if I can do it. Probably making you seasick. Oh, there's a little skipping. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Try not to get paint on my jacket, too. So as you get, as I said, as you get some more layers of paint on there, you can start to get a little skipping, which is fun. It's starting to look pretty. I don't really know where this is going exactly. I mean, I have a my roadmap, but I don't know. Like, I may have made this background too busy, and then I'll come back and smooth it out, maybe with a little brush or a palette knife and bigger strokes. I've been using this palette knife. There isn't a wrong one. Almost like a putty knife or a painting knife, like a house painting knife, and you just pull it down. I end up making kind of a blue or gray. It's still got some, I don't know if you can tell, it's a blue or gray. I added more black too. A little bit of the, the gray blue I had going and made it more gray and kind of played with that. So I'm gonna let this dry, have some dinner and I'll come back and work on the trees and see how things are looking.
Hey, I thought I'd pop in here with a couple of thoughts. So it's looking good. I like to look at it in my phone because it smooths everything out. And it, it's one way to see if it's working. It has, well here before, I, well, I will forget. So let's do this. It has a lot of texture. I laid the palette knife flat to uh, get the skipping. Now you can really see the skipping or the lights over the dark. Maybe that's too close. Should I back it up a little bit? So I don't know if I mentioned this. It's an 18 by 24 inch canvas. I'm doing it horizontal. I did a, the yellow trees with the stream with really juicy colors. The same size canvas, but I did it vertical. Let me come back in a little bit. So now I'm thinking, let's get some leaves on here. And if they're, if these are aspen trees, now I've learned the difference. So aspen trees have the, the black eyes where birch trees don't. So thank you, I can't remember who told me, but thank you, I really appreciate it. So what I'm thinking is, uh, Naples yellow is already muted. Um, this is Turner's yellow. It's a little more yellow, still muted. And then I took a little red oxide um, some Naples yellow and quite a bit of Turner's yellow to make sort of this rusty orange. And then I took the orange and pulled it down here and grabbed just a pinch of the Indenthrine blue. And orange and blue are complements, so it kind of neutralizes and makes a brown. There's a couple ways to make a brown. Um, sometimes I'll use black and or a little bit of orange. And so I'm gonna, I think I'm primarily gonna put on I think I just said it, the leaves, and see how they go. I'm gonna put mostly yellow ones on, and then I'm thinking some brown ones would be the ones that are dying. Maybe little hints of orange for some color. We'll see what I do, we'll see how it looks. But I really like it, it's fun, It's it leans a lot more towards abstract. I mean, it's impressionistic like the yellow trees, I think I called it in the air, but I don't know, I don't always call the YouTube the YouTube titles usually aren't what the title of the painting is because I'm trying to be found in search. So usually it's like how to paint, you know, a stream and trees. Okay, uh, anyway, they're both impressionistic, both abstract covers a wide range of things. Um, I, this one has more texture, which is really yummy. And I think I'm still repeating myself. I think I'm in art brain. I'll be back in a bit, guys. So I've got some leaves on here and I'm looking at my phone and it looks good. It's really pretty, it's soft. I like it. Now what I'm thinking is so I've got some heavy body titanium white. There, you can see that a little better. I'm thinking about grabbing a blob and then maybe just getting a little more texture in a few spots. My, my fingers are dirty. The handle of my palette knife is dirty because I smeared, I smeared, I don't know if you can see it, um, but I smeared some yellow streaks. I'll give you a little up close look here. I thought I would, I think I'm about done. So I thought I'd pop in and maybe chat a little bit. I thought it might be kind of fun to stick some 
So when you have paint really thick, it might take two weeks for this to cure, but I bet I could burnish it, um, oh gosh, in four days. Well, I'll put a gel gloss isolation layer on it, uh, let that dry for a few days and then burnish it. But it won't be cured, I don't know for how long. And cured means like you can't wake up the paint, that kind of thing. Of course, when you do it, you don't want to do it everywhere, but when you do it somewhere, you got to kind of put it somewhere else to... Oh, that's kind of nice. So if I just pull, you know, push and pull on it, I get some texture. Kind of like that. It's almost like birch tree texture. It's fun to play. Oh, then did I say that I was thinking about putting, oh, I've got some cad yellow. And I'm thinking I'm gonna put little bits of cad yellow just to give it a little more pop. Those are really muted leaves, which I like, it's really pretty. I'm kind of want most of it kind of here. Oh, I kind of like it when I just stick it down. It's kind of like, um, oh, I have an older house, and so when they plaster the ceiling and they stick the trowel to it, and you get that rough texture. It's pretty much the same thing. Okay, guys, I'm going to work on this a little bit because I, I feel like I need to entertain you and chat, and I'll come back at the end. Hey, I moved my camera back a bit and my chair down, <laughs> so it just cuts off maybe the top of my head depending on if I slouch or not. I really like this one. It wasn't quite what I think I mentioned in the beginning. I was going to have a warm tone painting because there's a lot of blue in there. But I really, I really like it. I hope you guys like it too. And I think you should try it. I mean, look at, I have messy messy let's see if I can get this oh yeah that was a little easier for me to maneuver too I have messy little leaves so I'm gonna get closer look at those messy leaves it, oh you know what I had I've got a I probably got a pretty big list going but I'll put in the description a link to my messy poppy painting I think you'll really enjoy doing it let's see if I can get some more leaves here I've got some sort of like faint leaves Oh, here's where I just smeared with my fingers some yellow. Can you see? Oh, there's a shadow, and I'm going to point to it again. It's right there. And then, like, partial leaves, I don't even fill, I don't even close it all up. Oh, that's called, um, closure? No. I forget, I think that's what that's called, where you, you, your eye just goes, oh, yeah, that's a leaf, even though I didn't do the whole shape. I should know all those art terms. My mind has just not been... Oh, and then I put black. Occasionally I put a little bit of black. You could do Indian 3 and blue too. That would have been pretty. Just to give it a little more strength and spots. I don't know what all you want to see here. Maybe more messy leaves. Well, and the trees are messy. And the layers. The layers really do the trick on the trees. And it was easier since I brushed the trees in first. I just think that's really fun. Well, and it's fun to mix it up. And you can certainly paint it small or bigger, whatever you guys feel like. Let me know if you give this one a try. Thanks for hanging out with me this long. I really appreciate it. You guys are amazing. I've met so many wonderful people through YouTube and Facebook. Those are the two best places to find me. Great big happy art hugs, and I hope to chat with you soon. Bye, guys.